Welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I am your host, Vasavi Kumara, and I am here joined by my client, Jason Bouchel. Jason, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Our relationships come a long way over the years, so this is this is exciting. This is why I'm thrilled to have you on the show today, okay? I talk a lot about saying your story out loud, being of service to others, getting confident on camera, and I talk about it, and I think it's very easy to, to, to listen to me and hear me and see me and be like, oh, easy for you to say, Voss. You're a therapist. You're a former TV host. You have your own podcast. This is just something that comes naturally to you. You don't struggle with my issues. I don't have, you know, uh, you don't struggle with confidence and all that stuff. And, and the fact is I openly share about my own insecurities and that, and I, and I can only, I, I, I do that because I want people to really know that they're not alone. But why I'm so excited about having you on is because you are someone that I have personally worked with and we're still working together, actually. And we are working on this very thing that I preach about, which is being confident on camera, integrating all the parts of yourself, saying it out loud. So um, it truly is uh, a treat for me. And I know that the audience is really going to benefit from what you have to share today. So let's just start with, when you first reached out to me to work together, okay, uh, where were you at in your life? Like, what is that snapshot of Jason back then? Yeah, that snapshot of Jason back then, which was about a year ago, was he felt fragmented. Um, he had all these different parts of his life. He had personal relationships. He had a romantic relationship. He had school. I'm currently in business school at Stanford. Um, he also had this love of performing and sharing, but all those pieces didn't feel integrated. He felt like he kind of had to pick and choose one of them to focus on at a time. And then there was always another part of him that didn't feel full. And so I feel like our work together has been on how to integrate and have just a fuller, richer life at once. Um, and it's been really magical. What I love working, uh, what I love working uh, about working with you is how in tune you are with the parts of yourself that you feel have not been integrated or the parts of yourself that you've dismissed or avoided, or you just, you know, you've tried to make sense out of it, analyze it and still feel like mm, something's missing. One of the, one of the key stories in your life that has set the tone for this uh, fragmented feeling that you've had this key story that we always come back to. And I want to say this with every client that I work with, you know, we are always looking to extrapolate, like, where does this come from? Right. Cause you, you didn't just wake up like this. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, everyone has stories, st a story and stories that lead to this very familiar feeling, Jason, everyone goes through this. Anyone who says they have not gone through this is lying, feeling mm -hmm. fragmented every, you know, everyone goes through this. So one of the things with you and I that we worked on is really looking at that core story of yours. This is the first time that you're sharing this core story here on the Say It Out Loud podcast. I can't think of a better place, but even, you know, even before sharing it here on the podcast, you recently just hit a huge milestone in your life as it relates to this core story of yours. Can you tell us a little about that recent milestone that you've hit and why it's so important to you? Yeah, thank you. Um, so I recently gave a keynote at Stanford Business School where I talked about the importance of trusting your body for decision-making as a framework for decision-making, as I called it. And that was a huge milestone for me because I openly shared my coming out story um, and how that has really shaped every decision of my life since um, I came out to my parents when I was 10 years old. Um, so I was, I was a young kid and I, and I knew I was gay. And when I told them that they lovingly responded that I should wait until I was older to be sure. And that waiting, I think is really the first time that I started realizing and questioning if I can trust myself. Um, can I trust that I knew this thing about me when I was 10? Um, and so I have really since been rethinking about how I can use my body and my intuition as a form of self-trust um, and sharing that in front of 100, 200 people um, was really the first time I've ever talked about that openly. And I feel like it really impacted um, a lot of people that I've spoken to. So it feels um, really great to talk about it in a new way. You are 
first of all, I, 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 okay. My tendency is to like, go to the next thing. Let me stop for a second and just actually reiterate, reflect and um, repeat back what you just said, because I think as we tell our stories, oftentimes we become so used to hearing our story that we can just talk over it. I'm not saying you did that, but I think this is, this is what I would say to anyone that I'm working with. And I have to remind myself of this. It's like, we want to be able to talk about our stories where we are fully integrated with when we're sharing it, right? Because our job as speakers, performers, artists, actors is to make our audience feel something. Mm -hmm. And how can our audience feel something if we haven't felt it and we're not embodying that expression? So I, I want to take a moment to just really slow down both of us, right? I'm not saying you're speeding up. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself. No, but been, yeah. You at the age of 10 came out and you said to your parents, I think I'm gay. Or did you say, I think I'm gay or I am gay? I wrote it down on a piece of paper. I, we, were, we were at a diner. Um, I was hysterical crying. I said, please take me home. I kind of sent them to their room as if I was the parent. And then I remember I took a piece of loose leaf paper and I wrote down on it, I think I'm gay. And then I slid it under their door. And then I knocked and I said, read it and come in when you're when you're done. Um, and that was how I told them. And their response to you when they read the note that said, I think I'm gay, that you wrote down on loose leaf paper and you folded and put it underneath their door. What was their response to 10 year old Jason? 10 year old Jason saying, yeah, 10, yeah. I think I'm gay. What did they say to you? Yeah, I think they they started by saying, um, we love you. Mm-hmm. Um, if this is true, we love you and we accept you. Um, and then it kind of went into a little bit of fact checking. Um, like maybe you just think boys are handsome. Um, you know, maybe it would make sense to wait until you were like 14 or 15. So it, I would say it's it started by we love and accept you, but then it kind of moved into this um, kind of pressure testing if it was true. Yeah. But let's just, yeah. let's, let's actually let that sink in for a second, because what I want everyone listening to this to really hear is like, how, where in your life, once again, we are not blaming Jason's parents. We are not, you know, making them out to be awful people. That's not what this is about. Right. So for all of us, we have an incident, right. Where something happens, something happened and this thing happened and it forever changed your relationship to you, your wisdom. You, you got cut off from your source, right? In that moment, 10-year-old Jason was very connected to his source and to his body. And at that age, he knew, I'm talking about you like you're not here, sorry. Jason, you knew at the age of 10, I think I'm, I like boys. I think I'm gay. You knew enough at 10 years old to construct that sentence. I think I'm gay. Mm -hmm. And when you went to your parents and as children, we do put our parents on a pedestal. We, we, we looked at, they're our gods at at that age, at our age, parents are our gods. And even as you get older, we sometimes, we got to take our parents off the pedestal, right? You went to them hoping for what I imagine, what, what were you hoping they would say to you? Yeah. Like if we've never talked about this, if you could go back and rewrite all of that over, if, yeah. if they just would have said this, how would have your entire life been different? Yeah, it's it's a great question. You know, in the moment, I can I remember what I wanted in the moment. And at that point, it was just to be heard. I don't think I and to be accepted. Um, so in that moment, that's all I really, I think, could consciously think about. But if I could go back and rewrite history, um, which I fantasize about sometimes, I think I've even told my parents this, Um I would have loved their response to be, you know, um, if you're sure, you're sure, um, <clears throat> and we love and support you, um, and less questioning. <clears throat> and if, at the very least, I think, if not that, then maybe checking in like six months later. Um, I think a little bit of checking in on how that process was for me. Um, yeah, maybe would have changed when I actually came out, because I didn't come out till I was 18. Um, so that's eight years of not trusting being, yourself, not trusting myself and being unsure about something that I was really sure about. Um, even when I wrote the word, I think I'm gay, I remember qualifying it. I was like, this isn't, I know, but I wrote think to, you know, to make it slightly easier for the 10 year old version of myself. 
and maybe also slightly easier for your parents. Like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I don't want to be so certain because that might scare them. Let me be a little watered down. So everyone mm -hmm. listening, think about in your own life where you were sure about something. You're sure. But then you start to talk to people. You yeah. start to tell people about your thing. And then you get their opinions. And then you're like, maybe I'm not so sure about this thing because, oh, I've just now let other people's opinions enter into my mind. How many of us have done that, stayed in relationships for too long, stayed in jobs too long, said, you know, entered into a friendship where we just feel like this is really one-sided. Like you just, you just ignore yourself, right? And I, I, I love what you said about like, you wish that their response was like, if you're sure, then okay, we support you, right? But like putting it back into, putting the power back in your hands and being like, well, we trust that you tr can trust yourself, right? Like we trust that you trust yourself. Yeah. Wow, that would have been so powerful for you, though. So powerful. And I was just talking with my parents about this actually a few days ago. Mm -hmm. um, and they had shared with me that it was actually advice that they had gotten, like from, I think, a teacher I had in preschool. Um, and so I just think it's so interesting the way that we're all we're all kind of trying to learn from from someone like I was, you know, probably kind of trying to learn from my parents in, in their response. And I think they were trying they were getting advice from my teacher who kind of saw me playing with girls um, a lot and maybe had some questions about that. So it kind of just, for me, really shows me that, um, yeah, everyone's kind of trying to learn from somebody else and then it, it's hard to kind of um, know what the other person is actually looking for. Um, and that's wow. sometimes that's the best path. What I, what, I never knew that, but I mean, in all of our sessions, yeah. I, well, yeah, obviously you I just, just talked, learned it the other day. Yeah. But I'm, I'm now thinking like, oh, see, it's so interesting, right? You, you think, it's been this way this whole time, right? And you're like, oh, that's what they said. But now you know a little bit more behind the scenes. Now what can happen is the resentment can can start to dissipate. More compassion yeah. can now come like, oh, they didn't freaking know. They were getting advice from a teacher back in the what, early 90s. What the hell did anyone yeah. know in the early 90s about how yeah. to talk to kids? Wow, they were just trying to do their best. And so 10-year-old Jason can start to heal because yeah. the adult Jason, the adult Jason can be like, they were just doing their best. Now, adult Jason can now start to nurture that 10 year old Jason who maybe still be pissed off and still or still like not trusting himself. And you can be like, no, listen, they didn't know. They yeah. didn't know. They didn't mean to do that. Listen, you were right the whole time at 10 years old. Wow. Look at how smart you were. Look at how wise you were. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think our our work has been so exciting because it's it's really just about understanding the past to now have a better present and future. Um, it's not about kind of like staying there and, and getting frustrated by it or even reimagining it. I mean, it's fun to fantasize about it, but for me, it's really been about how can I understand what I needed then to know what I need now? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I constantly now picture 10 year old Jason when I make decisions and think like, oh, would this make him proud? Um, and that feels like a really different way to, to live. So if, if I had to like come up with the process of our work together, right? So it's like, we looked at your core story, right? We looked at your core story. That's something that I think we, that's always there in the background. And then yeah. we also start to create a new story. And the way that we create a new story is by integrating those parts of yourself that have been hidden. One yeah. of the, th I'm going to let you speak on this, but one of the things, <laughs> Jason, no one knows this except you and I, every, every week on our, on our FaceTime calls, you're in your car and you're always looking snazzy as hell. You got some neon uh, fleece pullover, or you have a shirt, like bright shirt with like a smile. Like you're always like, that's one part of you. One, there are many parts to you that I love. Uh, and we're still bringing out more parts to you. But one part of you that I love is how expressive you are through your clothing. Another part that I love is how excited you get about traveling. And you're like a professional experiencer. As an actor, I appreciate that because my job as, as an actor is to experience life and bring that to the stage. I yeah. love that about you. So I, I'd love for you to speak on different parts of yourself that maybe just came naturally to you, but you weren't really integrating it. Do you know what I mean? It's like this thing yeah. that you always do, but it's not like a full embodiment. Like you're not expressing that fully. So let's talk about that, about the different parts of yourself that you've discovered throughout our time together. Yeah, I would love that. Um, I think fashion is a huge one for me that I never, I never really thought about before. I would always love like reading fashion magazines or going to like different blogs, but I would never wear half the stuff I would look at. I would just say, oh, that, that looks so cool. Um, and I would say really in the last six months, so about halfway during our, our work together, 
I started to play with, um, can I use fashion as a way to express myself, like express the, the feminine parts of myself, the masculine parts of myself, the playful parts of myself, um, like the queer parts of myself. Um, and so doing that has been such a wonderful experience. I feel so much more authentic and myself when I dress in a way that just feels fun and, and playful. And it reminds me of actually being 10 years old. Like I remember I used to like wear my mom's like shoes or her, like she would have like these funky hats, like it was just fun. And so I think channeling that um, is really different and actually feels like a source of power for me now. Um, and it feels kind of fearless sometimes to wear the things I choose to wear, which feels really good. When you wear your uh, when you wear your whatever outfit you want, I can, I feel you. I can feel your vibe. I can feel your energy. Hold on. We're going to pause real quick. Just want to let you know when I, when I vaped, I will edit that part out. Oh yeah. I figured. I just, just, I'm no, not going to like, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that. Like, I, I, I edit I all had of a this. feeling that would happen. Yeah. Okay. Um, what other parts of yourself are you starting to integrate into your life? Another big part of myself that, um, I've integrated, it's kind of gone in ebbs and flows, is being on camera and sharing publicly me. Mm -hmm. um, I did musical theater um, from age six to, I think, 18 or 19. Um, yeah, I used to like love to sing and dance and would be in like a musical, even two musicals a year. Um, and then wait, when I wait was, are you gonna sing for us on the Say It Out Loud podcast? I, I don't know. Maybe then. Maybe if you invite me back, I haven't said time. <laughs> um, I so the funny part is when I was like eighteen, I stopped. Um, I just I stopped, and I think a lot of that was a mix of like that was kind of when I was coming out, and it just sort of felt like too much for me at that time to lean into that part of me. Um, meanwhile, I, that was what I did when I was younger because I trusted myself and and felt confident about myself. Um, and it really hasn't been in for the last, again, the last like six to eight months since we've been working together. And I'm like, wait, I love being on camera. And there's something about that relationship with an audience um, that I love and miss that I actually grew up doing. So that's another part of me that um, I'm sort of now discovering how to reintegrate. I don't know if, I don't think musical theater is the, the path for reintegration for me, um, but things as simple as sharing on social media or, you know, perhaps exploring acting again. Um, those are ways I would love to keep in exploring integration. Does this resonate with you? I'm thinking about this right now. It's like at 10 years old, you knew you were gay. And then eight years went where you didn't really have a chance to explore your sexuality, right? You were just kind of cut off. And, and in fact, yeah. you, you dealt with your trust issues through more obsessive compulsive ways like that's how you learned how to control uh things around you because you didn't feel in, really in control of your own self because that connection was cut off from your source so it's interesting like for for eight years basically 10 to 18 it's like who are you right you thought you knew that you were gay and so all the things that came so naturally like the theater and maybe the acting and stuff that you love doing it's I, i'm almost wondering like when you turned 18 and you were like okay i'm gay like this is it like i'm gay I heard you say just a few minutes ago, you said it was just all too much for me. And I, part of me was like, were you afraid of being too gay? Right. In quotes, I'm yeah. saying this, like I'm coming out as gay. Okay. Y'all, this is it. Like I'm owning it. Oh, but I can't do the musicals anymore. That's like too gay. Or I can't yeah. dress like this. Cause I, I mean, was there a part of you that it, it, like, I, okay, here, here's why I'm saying this as someone who grew up on long Island, you did too. Not a lot of Indians back in the day. Right. I, I grew up in Nassau County. So I feel cut off, right? Like I'm, I'm not white. I mean, I'm not white. And I don't, also sometimes don't really feel Indian because I'm not your typical Indian girl. I went, you know, typical, I say that typical. And sometimes I think about how can I be more Indian, right? But then I'm like, everything feels so superficial. Like, oh, I'd have to wear Indian clothes all the time. It just feels like when you, when you are stepping into an identity that maybe you've been cut off from, it can feel a little bit too much to be like, mm -hmm. oh, I can't be too out there, right? Is that something that you experienced? Is that maybe why you kind of, you know, maybe didn't pursue those creative arts again after the age of 18 when, when you just, when you own the fact that you are, you are gay? Yeah, it's a great question. I don't think in that point in time, I was consciously thinking about it in that way. Mm -hmm. I think what it was for me in those moments was those 
so if, if you those eight years I was performing the whole time and so I think there was a part of me that connected musical theater with parts with times that I wasn't fully myself so like in this weird way musical theater started as something that was so core to who I was but I spent so much of that time also disconnected from myself that I think it brought back that part of me that like when I perform I can't I'm not fully myself because so much of that time I was closeted um so I think for me that's what it was about and it took a little bit of time really the last year to like remember how I am how I was like 10 and earlier um as like a core human being um I think that's was more so what it was about I think when I first came out to, to your point it was hard to know how how to be like mm -hmm. because I had just spent eight years burying this part of me not like, being that you like yeah. not denying that so now denying it's like, well, that. what does gay look like for 18 year old Jason yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it, I wasn't even consciously I was I wasn't even bearing it on a conscious level and that to me is the crazy part it wasn't like every day I was like don't think about this I, I hadn't even remembered writing that note to my parents when I was 10 it was like completely blocked from my mind and so I think when I actually came out at 18 it was like there was this integration of like how do I integrate who I was eight years ago with everything that's happened in the past eight years um yeah now as you're you know here you are about to graduate from your Stanford Sanford program, the MBA program, right? And you recently, um, you recently disclosed and publicly told the first for the first time your own coming out story. But what I loved about your story is how you connected your body wisdom, like you really you 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 put your back into it, right? Like you you mm -hmm. you you integrated your body. So how did you how did you get to that point where you identified your core story? You find these different parts of you that maybe have been left dormant or kind of you know, not really expressed over the course of God knows how many years. And now you're on stage, like giving your own TED talk esque exam, you know, uh, story to the Stanford, Stanford community, really in front of a lot of powerful and influential people. Like, how does one do that? Because that, that's really what I want the audience to, to hear. I want all my listeners to hear this. Jason came to work with me, what, eight months, eight months ago. Yeah. And you just gave the story when? Two weeks um, ago. about a week and a half ago. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it's, it's, and yes, the, the opportunity happens like once or twice a year, right. To be able to tell the story, whatever that's, that's not what this is about, but it's like emotionally, energetically, creatively, let's look at who you've become. You went from someone who eight years ago, um, really this, this core story of yours of like, you know, being told that, uh, you shouldn't really trust yourself at age 10, right? To now where you are talking about this, like, how does one do that? What, what, is, what was the missing piece for you to go from, this is something that I went through. Wow, this is how it shaped me. Oh my God, this story is literally the foundation for, for really everything that's happened in my life. Look at who I've become as a result of this. Wow, I have the courage now to start integrating different parts of myself. Okay, I'm going to get on stage and start telling people that. What was the missing piece? Or what are the things that you've been doing that we've been working on that has helped you get to that point? Because that's what I want people to see. You're not just born being able to get on stage, talk to people. There is something internally that has to take place. Yeah. Yeah. Internally. What was that internal transformation? And what I want everyone hearing, Jason's not, I know you, Jason. So like, I can, I feel like I can say this. It's like, you're not like the kind of person that's like, oh, I'm here. I am. I've arrived. Right. It is an unfolding. It is an undoing. It is an unbecoming. It is an unlearning. Right. right? It, it's the core of who you are has, has always been juicy and golden. It's all the shit on top of that, that you had to kind of move away and, and, oh, got to get through the swamp of the shit, right? Yeah. The shit, but, 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 but the swamp is so good, right? That's yeah. the stuff that gets you to the side of where you can get on stage. What was that? internally for you? What was that like? Yeah, I think the moment for me where it started to shift was remembering who I was before all the, the crap piled on, as you as you put it. Mm -hmm. When I remembered, I was like, wait, I knew who I was at 10. I was like, that's pretty remarkable. Um, I was like, that's actually really, that could be my superpower. I think I once texted, I was like, wait, I think the fact, I think the depth that I know myself is my superpower. Mm -hmm. And so I think when I realized that it's shifted for me where I was like, oh, can I use this as a source of 
inspiration or service to others. Um, so I think that was the moment for me that it started to shift. And then I found a lot of smaller opportunities to, to share my perspective, to share my process for how I make decisions now, which is like a full body listening and integration experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just notice that people would be really surprised, but excited and be like, oh, I want, I'm going to try that. And so I think finding like smaller opportunities to kind of see how your story resonates with other people was helpful because it propelled me to say, oh, this, this means something, this is helpful to people. And then it, I think ultimately gave me the confidence to, to apply for this larger keynote opportunity. Um, and then having positive feedback there is just propelling me to want to continuing to share the message um, in the service of others. The, the internal validation of yourself, like you, I mean, obviously through our work together, and I know you also work with the therapist as well, is like, it, if you've been, if you have been invalidated throughout your life, right, it, it helps to have people in your life who validate you, plain and simple. I don't know how else to yeah. say it, right? If you're not yeah. going to work with a therapist or a coach, have a friend that validates you. We all need that. I'm not even going to try to act like you don't need anyone, right? Like it's okay to, and when I say validate, when you would tell me your story and we kind of uncovered that core story, I, I remember I cried to you once and which is very untherapist like I mean, you know, but I, I remember I cried to you and I was like, when you told me the story that you were going to share for your keynote and just the process of being 10 years old and coming out to your parents, there were parts of your story that I didn't even know, like you flipping a quarter, right? You, I mean, the, I mean, and, and for all of you who are like wanting to hear this keynote talk that um, Jason did, we have a link to the video, right, Jason? So we'll put that in the sh show notes. I don't want to give it all away, but I remember you sharing your story with me. And I remember um, it, it really, it touched, I cried, I cried and I was like, Whoa. And I, that's when I, it hit me. It's like, Oh, Jason has got, gotten to a point and that made me feel really good. <laughs> like, wow. Okay. Our work together, the work he's doing is, is paying off. Like you were able to share your story in such a way where I could, I could feel you. I wasn't like, Oh, he's just telling the story. You know, he's just telling the story like, Oh, the, the shit happened, whatever. I felt it. I felt, I felt for the 10 year old. And I also had such massive respect for the 30 something Jason who was telling the story, but that comes from the, my philosophy, as y'all know, know, because the name of this podcast is say it out loud philosophy. I fundamentally believe that you were able to unapologetically share this story on stage because you are in the habit of saying it out loud. And when you say it out loud to another person, someone who's been through something similar, and they can validate your experience, that really gives a lot of confidence to then continue to keep sharing that story, would you say? Yeah, 100%. I didn't actually, totally, because saying it to somebody else helps you, I think, remember, like the pain that mm -hmm. you felt. Um, when I think, when I used to think about my coming out story, I don't even think I honored how brave that was to say that at 10, and how hard that was to hold it in for eight years, because you know, you hold on to something for eight years, you become desensitized to it. You're like, oh yeah, I waited for like half, for like a decade. Um, but when you say it to somebody else and they can kind of, you can kind of see the emotion in them from hearing it. I think it kind of is a mirror to you and reminds you of actually what you felt in that moment um, and kind of give space for it, which it deserves. Um, so yeah, I, I totally agree. So it was like you up until a certain point where it was like, oh, this is my story. But then you told somebody else who felt the compassion for you that you had yet to develop for yourself. Exactly. That's what it is. So yeah. we need to borrow compassion from other people. And that's why it's so important. Cause like, yeah. when you told that to me, I remember, do you remember my reaction? I don't know if you remember. I was like, wait, what? Like yeah. I, you know, you had just been like, oh, this is my story. This is what happened at 10 years. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jason at yeah. 10 years old, let's break that down. And I realized in my mind, Jason grew up really fucking quick. Mm -hmm. Jason grew up really quick. You had to grow up really quick to be just, I mean, like it's, you're not that child, like in, you're not innocent anymore at that point. Cause you went so innocently and with such purity to your parents and you're like, you are forced to grow up like, Oh, I guess I, you know, that's like something that a child should not have to experience, but you did. And the fact yeah. that you're able to not only see it rationally, but also with emotion and also with compassion, you're not being dismissive. You're also like, you're, you're able to integrate your higher self, your wise self, 
this wounded, this ego part of you, right? This inner child, you're able to see all of it from different lenses and then integrate that to then be able to embody the lesson and the, and the, and the core message, which is trust your body, your intuition, be one with yourself. Yeah. You're, then you're able to share that with others. What a gift, Jason, to others. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think self-trust is something that people don't talk about enough. Um, you know, when I gave the keynote last week, um, it was just incredible to hear from so many other people who say, oh my God, I have a decision that I have to make. And I just, I don't know what to do. And it's like in all of those moments, for me, it, it does boil down to like, well, do you, are you trusting yourself? Um, and there's, I just think it's a, such a common human experience that we all um, are faced with. And like, even there's, we still, this is work I do every day. I'm like, okay, am I trusting myself in this moment? Or is this, you know, other people's voices um, getting in my head? And I think that that impacts the way I, I make decisions now. And even the moments I ask for feedback and the moments I, I say, you know what, I don't, I don't need feedback. I, I know what I want. All right. I trust that I, I have the data I need to make a decision. You know what I love about sharing your story is that it forces you to level up, right? Mm -hmm. Now that you're sharing your story and you're talking about like, like being verbal and expressive about your life and offering wisdom and nuggets to people, it forces you to start practicing it even more. <laughs> Yeah. Right. It does. And, and if, if you really want to be, if you really want to grow up and if you really want to mature, and if you really want to deepen your relationship with yourself, start talking about your shit to other people, start mm -hmm. advising other people. Cause, cause then you'll start to see the polarity. Oh, I'm saying one thing to another, but I'm not practicing it. Best way to get yourself in alignment. Yeah. It'd be like, Oh, I'm not practicing what I preach. That's why I went to rehab twice. I was like, <laughs> I had to, I, I got like, and, and yeah. we all are put in situations where we are forced to have to look at our, our polarity within ourselves and mm -hmm. what we're expressing to the world and with ourselves. What I love with every client is that we usually come up with like a few themes to work on that really, um, they inform all the other areas of our life. So for you and I, our biggest theme with you has been self-trust. Yeah. So we've identified self-trust and underneath self-trust, there's, it's so many like micro, uh, kind of versions of that, how that affects your life the not having this trust. So I'd love to hear from you. How, like, what did you notice? Like, how is like identifying your core story and your theme of your life? Like, oh, Jason doesn't really trust himself. How has that now impacted other areas of your life and you developing trust in yourself? Where else in your life are you practicing self-trust? Yeah, so many areas. I think it, knowing the core story and like, that trust is where I want to learn and build from. I think it helped us kind of develop tactics for how to reinforce that habit. Like as you would like go to the gym and work out, I kind of see all of these tactics we do as like building that trust kind of meter within myself. Um, leaving voice memos for myself is one thing I know that you've, you've kind of inspired me to do, which I now tell other people to do or suggest explore do. doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that for me, build self-trust, just saying it out loud, even to myself can let me question my own self-talk or not question my self-talk, but, you know, kind of say, don't talk to yourself like this, like be kind to yourself. Um, especially like the 10 year old version that's still inside of me. Um, and so I think areas that come up is definitely school. Um, you know, the MBA program is super busy. People like notoriously say, oh, there's you have to make choices about what to do next in your calendar at every minute. And people get really stressed about it. And it's not something I ever get stressed about because I'm like, no, if I know if my, in my body, if I want to go to this event or if I want to um, go to this panel or take this class, like it's a full body integration experience that feels really clear. Like there's oftentimes not a lot of ambiguity. So I would say school is one area. Career is another area. Um, I was pretty concrete, knowing exactly what I wanted to do after business school. And that also felt like a, a body decision. Yeah. And so you can, you can implement a lot of what you've been uh, sharing now vocally and with your friends and on stage now into your own, uh, not only, not only into your own life, but really like that, that is the point of this work is that, you know, like you are such a good example of, we work together 
And now you're, you're like, you're helping others. Like that's the trickle effect. That's what happens when one person starts to heal, they help another person. That person starts to help another person. You just, you know, you blew it out of the water. You're like, oh, I'm going to get on stage and tell how many people were in the audience. I think like 150-ish. Oh, wow. Not, not too shabby for your first time, yeah. you know, but you, <laughs> yeah. whether it was one person or 150, right? This is yeah. the point that I want to make is that you're sharing your story. You're sharing something that has had an impact on you that maybe once you were ashamed of that, you know, really you allowed to define you to your own detriment. You're now taking that and, and you're not a victim to your story. You're like, Hey y'all, you want to know what happened to me when I was a kid? Here's how it affected me. Here's how it screwed my life up. And here's how I'm learning to take the power back in my life. Let me show you how that's mm -hmm. exactly what you're doing. Yeah, That's, yeah. And I, if everyone could have that mentality, oh man, we'd have so much fun in our yeah. healing and our transformation. Yeah, it's like, it's like, y'all, I went through this shit. Oh yeah. my God. And you want to know how much shit I went through? Let me show you. Oh, and I'm going to also show you how not to have to go through this yourself. Or yeah. maybe if you're in it right now, how to get out of it. I'm going to show yeah. you how, like, that's what you're, and you're having fun with it. And you're integrating all these parts to yourself of yourself as you do it. Uh, one, two, there are two questions that I've been wanting to integrate into this podcast. So you're going to be the first that I'm going to ask. I like that. Yeah. You're the first. Yeah. Because, um, I know that people listening to this podcast, they want to get out there. I know why people are drawn to when I speak is because they know what you see is what you get with me. I'm never, I'm not going to fluff shit up. People know that, you know, it's what I'm saying is exactly what I'm going to be saying. And, and what I mean. So I know that a lot of people who listen to the podcast have a, a dream and a and they want to be more out there. They want to have the courage to go after what they want. It's not necessarily being on camera or anything, but having sure. the confidence and the courage to go after it. So uh, w when we're doing things that are scary, we have what is often referred to as your as as your nerves. Your ner your nerves kick in, right? And a lot of times, if if you, if you don't really have any coping mechanisms to soothe your emotional uh, nervous body, we can, we can mistake that as like, oh, this is the truth. If I'm scared, I shouldn't do it. We've talked you and I, Jason, a lot of different ways for you to soothe yourself through verbal, verbally writing it down movement. Yeah. Talking to yourself, what, you know, all the things, what is your go-to to calm your nerves? Yeah, I think definitely a voice memo. Like that's a, that's mm -hmm. one that calms my nerves. Um, just so wait, of, so what you're saying is you like the sound of your own voice. You, I actually, you, yeah. yeah. And I think this, I think hearing the sound of my own voice in a safe environment, you know, it's just you and your phone. For me, it's when I'm driving. Um, I'm like, yeah, it feels like a safe way to hear my own voice. And just to kind of have put something out in the ether, um, it does make me feel a lot calmer. Um, so that's definitely one thing that I, that I do. Um, I think another is more of a, a reframe mechanism. Um, I, I tell myself that this isn't selfish. Um, I think, I know I have felt this and I've heard just anecdotally, it can feel, I think for a lot of people, selfish to, to share their story. Like, oh, who am I to share this? Um, um, am I this important? Um, and so oftentimes what actually calms me is a recognition that it's, it's not selfish to share your story if it's um, to help or inspire others. Um, it can actually be quite a gift to do that. Um, so I think just that reframe I tell myself um, is calming for me um, and kind of propels me to want to do the next thing. Um, and then I'll also meditate. Um, I'll, and I keep it really simple. I'll put like a five minute timer on my phone. Um, I'll sit um, and I'll just close my eyes and breathe. And like whatever comes up, comes up. But I give myself those five minutes I give myself the opportunity to turn off. Um, and sometimes my mind is still spinning, but creating that space um, calms me and kind of gives my brain a chance to just be with myself. Thank you so much for sharing those tips. Um, I, I obviously I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sucker for the voice memos because we've sure. used Voxer and audio notes in the past voice notes. Yeah. One thing that just came to mind, I'm going to share it with you as a, as a, a voice memo that you listen to. And I want to say this to everybody. Think about the one thing that you wish your parents would have said to you. For you, Jason, you said you want, you wish they would have said to you, we trust you, something, some version of that. Yeah. So everyone listening, here's, here's what you can do as like your takeaway, record a voice memo of, of something that you wish you would have heard and say it in your voice. And every time you're feeling down, play it back to yourself because yeah. you know that it, there's, there's all, there's something we all wish we would have heard from our mother, our father, whoever, you know, 
for me, I, 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 w- I have different things that I wish my parents would have said to me. Um, I'm going to do that too. Yeah. I, it's inter- I say it out loud to myself, but like, I love how you've incorporated technology into it because if we're all attached to our phones anyway, might as well. Yeah. Might as well use it for good. Yeah. yeah use it for good. Okay. So yeah. here's a second question that I want to ask. Um, is there anything left on this podcast? Is there anything on this podcast that you haven't said out loud that you want to say, so you can feel complete with this conversation? Yeah. Um, thank you for that chance. Um, I think one added thing from the prior question, which is related to this, because I do want to say it on this podcast, is for anyone who is more of a visualizer, like just uses like mental imagery. Another thing that I've recently started to do is picture my younger self taught like with my older self in the same space. So like oftentimes when I say like I'm thinking about 10 year old Jason, it's not him in a box. It's actually like he's literally sitting next to me and like seeing both your younger self and present self together, I think could be a really powerful visualization tool to know if you're you're kind of caring for the parts of you that maybe weren't cared for as a kid. Um, so to me, that is just an added tactic that I'm currently exploring that I wanted to kind of share in this space. Um, I think it's really powerful to, to visualize your younger self with your present self um, in one space. That is beautiful. I, I have recently gotten into imaging and visualization because as an actor, that's one of our ways that we can start to get inside the body of a, of our character is creating images yeah. to, to clue certain emotions. So just thank you for like emphasizing for me. I'm like, oh, I should, I should really get back into my visuals. Like I read about it all the time and I'm like, okay, Voss. And like, here's the thing, y'all, if, if a lot of the images, visuals that you have in your life are painful, you know, not to re-traumatize yourself all over again, but in a safe space, like that feels safe, right? Like, and try that out. Like, just try, just try something out, right? Yeah. If anything Jason said, like if the the visualization of like you sitting with your your younger self and just like pretend like you're sitting at a little tea table or, you know, whatever, yeah. like on a couch, like what's that experience like? Yeah. Closing your eyes in a safe space. I love that, Jason. I didn't know that you, yeah. you recently started doing that. So I'm glad that I'm hearing this and we can yeah. we can use that in our work together as well. Um, thank you so much for for sharing that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a it's a powerful tool for me. So I wanted wanted to share it. Um, the only other thing I would say that um, maybe I haven't said is um, for anyone who uses um, you know kind of just thinks logic's the way to go all the time. I just um, I would be so excited to hear how it would feel to to just start making decisions based on emotions. I think oftentimes in society we're told that like you know emotion based decisions um, are maybe like frivolous or they're not rooted anything. And I just think there's such a beauty in using that as your compass for making choices. Um, And that's what I've been doing. I think the emotions are very much attached to your body wisdom. So I just think that's, it's a fun thing to explore, even if it's not something you're committed to doing long-term. I, I, that, that is, that is right. That is right. Like, it's like, just explore it, just explore, just like you could listen, nothing wrong with, you know, let me just see, let me just Mm -hmm. see, let me try this for three days. Well, yeah. whatever. Try for, yeah. So beautiful. Love that. Um, okay. So I want to say thank you so much um, for being on. I want everyone listening to know that if you ever want to work with me one-on-one, we absolutely can. I know, you know, y'all, you've been on this journey with me where I'm like, I'm not taking any more clients. Okay. I'm taking more clients. You know, here, here's the thing. A lot, a lot of thought goes into this. And so it's just, you know, oftentimes we have to reevaluate who we are, how we're showing up, what we're offering, are we being clear on our message? So I want to say thank you to everyone for being patient with me on my, on my own journey, because we're all just going through it together. And that's something that I I want to openly say. It's like, it doesn't matter how far along someone seems or, oh, they may, they may seem like 10 steps ahead of you, but it's like, I think it's very comforting to know. And this is why I do share this. And I do self-disclose. It's like, I want anyone listening to the words coming out of my mouth to know like, yes, at any every stage in your life, you're going to be having to evaluate things in your life. You may not have it all figured out. It's not going to be all mess. It's not going to be all perfectly packaged. It's going to be messy, in fact. So if I can just share that openly with y'all, you know, that's that's the greatest privilege for me that I can just be myself with everyone, you know, uh, and integrate all those parts of myself. So yes, if you would like to work together, you can reach out to me on my Instagram at my name is Vasavi. You can go to my website at vasavikumar.com. Jason, what is the best way for people to reach out to you and get to know you? 
Yeah, I think the best way to reach out to me would be to follow me on Instagram um, and message me if you want to talk further about my story or, or body wisdom. Um, my handle is just my name, Jason Bouchel. Beautiful. And in the show notes, I will put the link to your talk. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for being on today here on another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. Thank you so much. Grateful for you. Grateful for you too, my dear.